Radio.pl. Welcome everybody from the house of Mr. Vladimir Bukowski, a man who actually showed by his example, by his life, that few people can change the reality. He never gave up and he was great inspiration for everybody who loved their uh, freedom. I know it's big words but a big man. Uh, today we are asking Mr. Bukowski to make a few comments about uh, the growing deficiency of democracy in Europe. That was the, one of the bottom lines of his book, Judgment in Moscow. In your book you wrote about convergency, the theory that uh, actually the West, the Western countries merge into one big organism with, Rus with Russia. Well, to begin with, uh, convergence and theory uh, came very early in 20th century. As you know, historically, the uh, socialist uh, movement in the world got split at the beginning of the 20th century into what they called Bolsheviks and Mensheviks. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference between was not very significant. Simply, Mensheviks wanted to achieve the same goals, only by more uh, slow means reformists rather than revolutionary. But the fact remains that uh, while Bolsheviks have won in the East, the Mensheviks have won in the West. And that's what lots of people in former communist countries did not realize. I didn't realize it too until I came to the West and suddenly discovered that they have more socialism than we used to have in the Soviet Union, simply because socialists have won here. I mean, look at Britain. They have the same uh, medical system as the Soviet Union used to have. It's free, you know, and as being free in the Soviet Union it didn't work, and being free in the West it doesn't work either. So that's, uh, you suddenly realize that they introduced a lot of socialism into their lives throughout the 20th century, gradually, slowly, not through revolution, right? And the theory was, mostly popular among the left wing and the socialist parties, that one day this divide between Bolsheviks and Mensheviks will be closed. That Bolsheviks will become milder, they will abandon their uh, uh, revolutionary zeal and violent nature, and they'll become what they call socialism with human face. Yeah. While the West would uh, increase their uh, socialist uh, features, and then there will be no difference, there will be convergence between yeah. these between the West and the East. So, I, uh, convergence is, first of all, ideological concept, which brings together these two worlds and uh, creates one world out of them, uh, which, according to this uh, concept, is going to be paradise. There will be no social problems, no wars, no poverty, no crime, as usual with socialist utopia. They give you a beautiful picture of the, of the ult, uh, ultimate triumph of their concept. New brave world. Yeah, but, uh, and uh, it, it was in theory for a long time. Throughout the 20th century, if you look uh, uh, on the relations between the West and the East, it was always these two things which uh, uh, formed the political reality. Uh, when Bolsheviks felt themselves strong, they would fight against Mensheviks. When they feel themselves uh, threatened, uh, in crisis, in difficulty, they would always pretend to be Mensheviks. Like Gorbachev with his so-called new thinking. Read his new thinking. New thinking is socialist. It's not communist. You know, that's very simple. So they would always indicate to the Western uh, fellow travelers that they're about to change. And therefore, uh, the left forces of the West come to their rescue, helping them. As soon as the crisis is over, they will go back to their former position as, as Bolsheviks and will reject socialists. So, socialists throughout the 20th century were taken uh, by this deception several times. They helped Lenin during an AP, they helped Stalin during a war, they, they, you know, they helped uh, Brezhnev during detente policy. It was always going in circles. And always this, always this uh, carrot of, um, of, of convergency would be used to, uh, to uh, attract the socialist donkey. You know, it was very, very good device for them. 
Now, ultimately, in the middle of the 80s, they suddenly understood that the crisis of socialism is everywhere, in the West and in the East. In the East, Gorbachev started his perestroika because socialism did not produce anymore, it was bankrupt. In the East, in the West, they had the same problem coming to them when socialism uh, became a big burden on national economies. They couldn't cope with it. So they decided that they would have a convergency. Uh, and the agreement between Gorbachev and Western uh, left-wing parties was formulated in the middle of the 80s. Uh, with Gorbachev coming up and announcing a new policy of our common European home. Exactly. He said. So in the West it was formulated like a European idea. In reality it was a socialist idea. Uh, and uh, in the East it was formulated like a reform of the Soviet Union. So there was attempt at convergence. Now, attempt was uh, unsuccessful, as we know, because the Soviet system could not withstand this degree of uh, <coughs> this degree of freedom. As soon as it was given, people took everything and they, they overthrew the system in Eastern Europe as well as in the, in, in the former Soviet Union. <coughs> so the convergence stopped because there was nothing to be converged with. Uh, it continued in the West uh, under the name of European Union, but it did not go in the East. And gradually it started absorbing the East European countries into its system. Uh, with the Eastern Europe becoming members of the European Union uh, and thus being connected to this, uh, uh, to this concept, to this uh, project. And uh, finally, in the Soviet Union, or rather in Russia, uh, we had a, a restoration process uh, started by uh, Putin and others. With the KGB coming to power, they have renewed the old policies of the Soviet Union in foreign relations, trying to restore the sphere of influence of the Soviet Union everywhere, uh, and returning some elements of Soviet system in, in Russia. Uh, and therefore, once it was consolidated, it renewed its effort of having convergence with the West. So, in today's world, Putin is very happy about the European Union. I mean, he, um, he is very critical of everything in the West, be it national governments or international organizations, except one, European Union. He's very uh, full of praises for it. In his articles, in his speeches, he, you remember his speech in Munich, which uh, kind of alerted everyone because it was so hostile. It was hostile to everything but the European Union. Just look at it. So he suddenly felt that he can now return to the old project. Wow, that's amazing. Is there any chance to actually reverse this project? If there is a chance, what can we do actually, we normal people, like ordinary people, to change? Well, there is always a chance. I mean, if we saw a chance in the Soviet system, to fight against it, there is always a chance. I mean, the European Union is its, uh, its infancy, it's still developing, and it already has a, a lethal disease. They can't cope with it. I mean, as usual, so socialist utopia is beautiful, except there is no money for it. So they're running out of money, as it so often happens with socialist systems. And the European Union is not exception. They're now in deep crisis of this so-called sovereign debt which is in reality a cost of socialism, which the national economies cannot, cannot bear. Uh, so uh, it, it looks like they're going to be bankrupt, like Soviet Union, uh, very soon. Some people claim that actually Germans are using, are using actually money instead of, of, instead of army to, to take control over the Europe. That might have been their project at the beginning, but if you look at the situation today, Germany is paying for everyone. Germany is the main source of money today for the rest of Europe. Look, who is giving money to Greece, the bailout money? Germany. Who is giving money to uh, Portugal? Who is giving money to uh, Ireland? It all comes from Germany. So. And they themselves are not doing well. I mean, last year economy uh, shows zero growth. Zero. That is very dangerous. That's a recession. <laughs> 